Introducing the all-new 2024 All-Terrain NES Emulator. Bring it out on your PC, mobile phone, microcomputer, smart fridge, smart watch, and it even works on Mac. That's because this emulator is written in JavaScript, and it runs in your browser, any browser. And no, I didn't create this emulator. That credit goes to Ben Fershman of the famous Fur.sh. But before we dive into the wild world of emulators, let me first explain the problem I found myself in. Long time and short time viewers here know that I'm a big fan of the NES and its games, but I'm not always sitting down in front of a television to use my Famicom, or in front of a computer to open up an emulator. And ever since I've created my own NES games, one of the comments I always get from a few people is, how do I use it? How do I open the file? So for a while I've been wanting some kind of emulator that both myself and others can use on any device at any time. I need a web-based NES emulator. So I tried to search online to see if there was a solution already, and while there are sites out there, they don't provide everything I would like. I want a virtual NES, with an easy interface to load any game that I have, a reset button would also be nice, and to make it more accessible, I'd like good button mapping and mobile controls. And none of the online emulators out there have all, if any, of these features. Again, there are NES emulator apps for every platform already, and they work fine. But my idea is that it would be the same emulator for both PC, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and all mobile devices, Android, iPhone, or even those weird Chinese ones. And so I came to the conclusion that if I really wanted all these things wrapped up in one, I'd have to make it myself. But don't get me wrong here, I don't have the time to write my own emulator. I'm not that crazy. But this is what brought me to the work of Mr. Fershman. His was the best open source JavaScript based emulator that I could find. JSNES, as he calls it, has both a Node.js version and a browser UI version. Now, I want to host this emulator on my website, not in .tokyo, so I thought it'd be better to implement the browser version. However, the code he has provided is React based. Nothing against React here, I just appreciate the simplicity and power of vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But looking through the repository, I found this, nes-embed.html, which points us to this script file here, jsnes.min.js. This file contains the entire NES emulator from top to bottom in less than 4,000 lines of code. And like I said before, this emulator is good, very good, but I don't even think that Ben himself would say that it's perfect. In fact, I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect emulator when it comes to the NES, as we'll see here shortly. The first test I did was to try to run some classic NES games, Mario, Kirby, Zelda, and they all look and play fine. Then I tested out a few of my own games, For the Bird 6, okay, colors look a little off. How about Nisos? Uh, that usually isn't cut off, right? Okay, so here's a little lesson in NES screen resolution. I've stated time and time again that the NES displays a resolution of 256 by 240, but there's an overscan of 8 pixels at the top and bottom, leaving only a visible resolution of 256 by 224. Or at least that's what I thought, because remember your NES will be connected to your TV, and TVs, like people, come in all shapes and sizes, some long and wide and others short and square. So, while some TVs will show 256 by 224 some will cut off more, to the tune of a restricted 240 by 212 as seen with the likes of the Pocket NES for the GBA, and even apparently Nintendo specifically kept all important information, i.e. scores, menus, dialogue, etc., within the confines of 224 by 192 You can't even see the Nisos home button at this point. That is to say, 1. I am not a professional NES programmer and 2. JSNES cuts this section out of view, producing a very thick border of 8 pixels on all sides. However, now that I have the code in my own hands, it's all just a quick fix luckily, because the emulator does generate the full image 256 by 240 and then just cuts it off. So I asked it politely to please not do that anymore. But in the future, I will have to be more careful with where I put things in my own NES games if I want them to function correctly on the Pocket NES or other such emulators. Also, being web-based, this NES screen here is just an HTML canvas. And notice how it's very blurry, almost too blurry? Well, that's because it is too blurry. On a web page, the canvas element doesn't have to have the same resolution as the physical size of the element on the page. That is how we can get very crisp Twitter images, where the canvas is 1920 by 1080 but only takes up a small section of the screen. Or in this case, having a 256 by 240 image take up most of the page. The fact that this image is blurry is due to the browser resizing this NES screen image to a physically larger scale using bilinear interpolation. 
However, it's possible to change the algorithm used here. In this case, the ideal is nearest neighbor scaling, giving us crisp, pixelated edges. Technically, not the way these games were meant to be played, but it's better than adding a fake CRT filter to the canvas. The only other thing this emulator has me concerned about is the colors. They just seem off to me. Again, for a long time, I've said that the NES has a 64 color palette, but not these ones exactly. In fact, no other machine can quite produce the exact same colors you'd see a real NES output to a CRT. Why? Well, the NES produces colors specifically based on the color space of televisions of Japan and the US according to the standards of the NTSC, the National Television System Committee. This color space is known as YIQ, which stands for Luminance in Phase Quadrature. The 2D slice where Y equals 0.5 can be drawn like this, and I won't go into details about how this color system works because it's not important for now. The fact remains that the picture processing unit inside of the NES creates a symmetric sampling of colors around the YIQ color space and produces a color palette that looks more or less like this. Unlike what some online rumors claimed, these were never handpicked by Nintendo engineers. This is a mathematically generated palette. That's the reason why we can't tell exactly what these colors are in terms of RGB, the color space of modern monitors and TVs. If you just try to sit next to a CRT and find a good RGB match, that's only what it looks like on your CRT filtered through your eyes. There's little probability that exact color is mathematically correct. So every single emulator has slightly different colors. FCEUX, Nintendulator, and even official Nintendo emulators like for the Wii and 3DS all have slightly different coloring because people are more or less guessing at what's correct. I don't have the answers here. I'm going to be taking these RGB values from the NES dev wiki, which I think are probably close enough to the actual values produced by the NES, and having overrode the previous palette values in the emulator with these new ones, I think that it's at least a slightly more accurate improvement. Then to bring this virtual NES to fruition, I've added a cartridge load button, which just lets the user select a game ROM to load into the machine, or you can drag and drop onto the page and it will boot up automatically. I've also added this reset button, which works just like the physical reset button on the system. Another part of wanting a one-stop universal emulator is the need for customizable controls on all platforms. That way, serious gamers like me, and the casual layman alike, can use whatever button or mapping they prefer. Now I may not have the perfect solution here, but what I've come up with is this. I've split the NES controller into four buttons each, the D-pad and the AB select start. I wasn't a fan of the default NES button mapping provided by the emulator, especially because it reverses the A and B buttons. So I've set the default to Z and X. And if you're on mobile, then this functions as a touchscreen controller, perfect to use anywhere at any time. And it's up to you whether you want to play horizontally or vertically. You may have also noticed this settings button. This will allow you to turn on controller 2 input, and I prefer to play with display input on, so that way I can tell if it's me that's bad at the game, or if I can blame it on emulator lag. And if you don't want your beautiful NES controller covered in yellow labels, then you can turn them off as well. Full screen is also a great way to play to take away from the distractions of the web browser. But one of the worst parts of any online emulator is they never save your progress. Whenever you refresh the page or even reset the game, it's all gone. Why can't it just be saved in the emulator? Well, a real NES has no long-term memory storage on the console. It physically does not have the capacity to remember anything you've done. It just does the calculations according to the instructions of the plugged-in program and outputs the video part of the game. Any long-term data is saved on the cartridge itself, which is accessible to read and write by the CPU when it's plugged into the NES. In terms of emulation, NES ROM files are read-only. There is no changing them. At least, I wouldn't trust any emulator that would. So some emulators create little save files that record any data that would have been saved on the cartridge and tie that usually to the ROM name and file location on your system. So play Zelda on a good emulator and it automatically loads in your save data from that separate file in the proper place in memory when you use the same ROM. Likewise, my emulator does this by saving the NVRAM portion of memory in the range of 6000 to 8000 hex depending on your game on your local system using the window.localstorage function. So feel comfortable playing some of these big NES games on your desktop or phone, knowing that when you boot your ROM again, the progress you've made will not be forgotten, nor in vain. Now let's address a few problems here. I still have not gotten the NES Zapper to work, even though I've done exactly the same input as Mr. Fershman has on his website where it works flawlessly. I've also messed around in the emulator code itself with these functions, and it's just not working for me, so that is still on the to-do-eventually list. 
There are also more features I will add later on. Definitely I'd like to add support for the Famicom keyboard before Nisos 2.0 comes out. And if there are any other tools that you'd like to see supported as well, let me know down below in the comments. 500 likes and I will know that everybody wants immediate support for the Pachinko controller. The JSNES top loader is available now and forever at www.notin.tokyo slash NES. And as always, if you want to see more like this, then don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.